Cleopatra, who lived in the past more than 2,000 years ago, is still an intriguing woman in us today. She ruled Egypt, the ancient Egyptian kingdom, for 21 years from 51 BC to 30 BC, and was recreated again and again in literature and art. According to ancient legends, Cleopatra, who was an extremely beautiful woman, took great care in maintaining her beauty. One of the methods she adopted was to bathe in the milk of 700 donkeys. And she used a lot of perfumes and cosmetics. Even though such matters were said, many facts about this historical figure were covered by fiction. This character had aroused great curiosity in Kathleen Teresa Martinez, an archaeologist at the University of Santo Domingo. Because of this curiosity, she had a wonderful desire. It was to find the tomb of this wonderful queen who was only in the history for a long time. She started this serious work about 20 years ago. Who is Cleopatra? Alexander the Great, who came from Macedonia and invaded Greece, built a huge empire. His successor, Ptolemy, became ruler of Egypt after Alexander's death in 323 BC. He started the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt, using the name Ptolemy I. Cleopatra belonged to that dynasty. The Ptolemaic dynasty adopted certain features of Egyptian culture, but remained largely a Greek royal family. In general, these Ptolemaic dynasties did not use the Egyptian language, but Cleopatra mastered the ancient Egyptian language as well as Egyptian customs and religious and cultural aspects very well since childhood. Similarly, astronomy, mathematics, Due to her knowledge and skill in medicine, she is gaining popularity as an outstanding queen. Kathleen Teresa begins her quest in the ancient city of Taposaurus Magna, an ancient sacred site in Egypt. It is located near the point where the Nile flows into the Mediterranean Sea. Excavations are started after carefully analyzing past facts and selecting specific locations accordingly. 13 years ago, Through these excavations, it was possible to uncover a large religious center so consisting of three sacred places. Place lost In fact, this group of explorers was already uncovering an architectural building complex that can be considered as an engineering miracle. Also, the research team found a large number of different stones, clay pots, gold pieces, and old coins. Kathleen Teresa worked hard with her research team, determined to see Cleopatra's tomb. Her attention was focused on the Temple of Osiris, located among the ruins of Taposaurus Magna. The most important clue was that Queen Cleopatra was considered the human incarnation of the goddess Osiris. Also, she committed suicide at a time when there was a strong enemy invasion. So it is reasonable to assume that her body was hidden in the temple of Osiris. More than 200 coins with Cleopatra's name and face were found in the temple grounds. This confirms that there is a clear connection between this temple and Cleopatra's reign. So, this could be the perfect place for Cleopatra's lost tomb. Meanwhile, at one point, this research team was able to find a tunnel 13 meters Absolutely. below the ground level. Any second it would go down. This tunnel, which starts under the ground and runs, is 1,305 meters long. Okay, look. Oh, God. So creepy, look. Ah. I tried to go inside, but then... 
We are now traveling through that tunnel to the past. Past remnants drive us crazy with curiosity. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a sphinx! Wait a minute. Let's turn to Cleopatra for a moment. Born in 69 BC, she initially ruled the Egyptian kingdom with her father. Her father died when she was 18 years old and according to the tradition of the time, she married her own 10-year-old younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, and led a co-rule. In order to maintain the purity of the generation and to retain the power of the state in one's own clan, it was a tradition of that time that intermarriage between brothers and sisters of the same family took place. But the 13th Ptolemy kicked out Cleopatra with the idea of taking over the government completely and started a government alone. Cleopatra flees to Syria. The historian Plutarch says that she later secretly goes to the ruler of Rome, Julius Caesar, hiding in a carpet, in search of protection and assistance. Cleopatra, who was an extremely beautiful woman, was 21 years old at the time, and Caesar, who was 52 years old, fell in love. Caesar defeats Ptolemy XIII and gives Cleopatra the kingdom as a result. It is said that Ptolemy XIII, who was fleeing, drowned in the Nile. According to state tradition, she has to marry her younger brother, Ptolemy XIV. At that time, he was a 12-year-old child. In the meantime, she gave birth to a son named Little Caesar, or Caesar Ion. She joins Julius Caesar in 46 BC, but Caesar is unfortunately assassinated in his own Senate in a conspiracy. That was in 44 BC. Cleopatra returns to Egypt. Although she stayed in Rome for two years, Cleopatra became a recognized figure among the women of the upper class of Rome. Indeed, she was a figure who had a significant impact on Roman society. Her jewelry and hairstyles spread rapidly among the high-ranking women of Rome at the time. This statue was carved by an artist when Cleopatra came to Rome. Some histories also mention that her second married brother, Ptolemy XIV, died a few days after Caesar's death, so she married her son Caesar Ion, who was three years old at the time. After Caesar's death, three of his followers, Mark Antony, Octavian, and Lepidus, lead the fight against Caesar's assassins, Cassius and Brutus. Among the above three, Octavian is said to be Caesar's adopted child. Since Egypt was an important country located in the Mediterranean at this time, both sides expected its support. At this time, Cleopatra arranged to send the Roman legions that Caesar had stationed to protect Egypt while he was alive, to support the side of Caesar's followers. BC by 42, Caesar's followers won the war and Octavian took over the power of Rome. At that time, Mark Anthony was a Roman general. He summoned Cleopatra to the city of Tarsus in southern Turkey to discuss her role in the aftermath of Caesar's death. At this time, Cleopatra arrived at the port of Tarsus in a gilded ship with silver oars and purple sails. She was dressed as the goddess Osiris. Mesmerized by her beauty, Mark Anthony instantly falls in love with her. Mark Antony's support was important for Cleopatra to keep her crown and to secure Egypt's independence. Antony gives Cleopatra twins named Helios and Selene. But even then Mark Antony was married. However, 
Mark Antony Cleopatra love was also a love story that shook Rome. It is a story that has been celebrated in literature throughout history. Mark Antony agreed to provide protection to the Egyptian state and further cement Cleopatra and her son's right to the throne. Meanwhile, Mark Antony's attempt to invade Persia or current Iran failed. Returning feeling defeated, Mark Antony refused to go to Rome and stayed in Egypt with Cleopatra. In the name of the mighty Caesar, I grant to King Ptolemy Caesarian that... Meanwhile, I... Octavian gets angry because of Mark Antony's statement that Julius Caesar's rightful heir is Caesar Ion, Cleopatra's child, and not Octavian, Caesar's adopted child. The Roman Senate strips Mark Antony of all his positions and Octavian declares war on Cleopatra. On September 2, 31 BC, a massive naval battle took place between the Roman forces of Octavian and the forces of Mark Antony and Cleopatra. It is considered to be the biggest naval battle in the world before the birth of Christ. About 250 Roman warships and 290 warships of Antony and Cleopatra fought here, and Cleopatra led the Egyptian division. Here, Mark Antony and Cleopatra's forces were defeated by Octavian's forces. Octavian won the sea battles and landed in Egypt, heading for its capital, Alexandria. Although Mark Antony managed to win a minor battle on land, it was a truly decisive defeat. Meanwhile, many of Anthony's army began to desert him and join Octavian. I'm afraid. After the defeat, Cleopatra fled to a secret chamber in a tomb inside a tunnel that she had prepared herself by spreading fake news about her death. Meanwhile, after hearing the false news that Cleopatra committed suicide, Mark Antony decides to commit suicide. Confused, Mark Antony stabbed himself in the chest with his sharp knife, but did not die immediately. Mortally wounded, he is later taken to Cleopatra's tomb. He breathes his last on Cleopatra's arms. The Queen of Egypt who knew well what her destiny was, had no choice left. In the end, Cleopatra killed herself by biting a very poisonous snake, which was considered to be the divine sign of Egypt's kingdom. That date in BC 30 on August 12th. At that time, she was only 39 years old. This marks the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty. We have... 2050 years oh. after this event, we are walking along a mysterious tunnel discovered by Kathleen Teresa Martinez and her group of explorers. At the end of the tunnel we find a tomb. There is the body of a long dead man and the body of a woman covered in gold leaf, buried in the same place. Seeing this sight, an eternal love that has been blessed in various ways throughout the past begins to fill our hearts.